Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, Andrew Little. Mr Speaker, I seek leave to move a motion without notice on the death of Helen Kelly. Uh, leave is sought for that course of action. Is there any objection? There is none. Andrew Little. Mr Speaker, I move that this House mourns the passing of Helen Kelly, who was a champion for working people and who fought for a more just and fair New Zealand and express our condolences to her loved ones. Mr Speaker, Helen Kelly was raised in a household built on values, principles, convictions and immense determination. She knew what it was to believe in a cause, to champion it and to be active in it. Helen's political and industrial leadership began with her championing the cause of early childhood teachers. At a young age, she was involved in negotiating with senior education officials and with education ministers to improve the terms and conditions for teaching staff dealing with what is now recognised as the crucial years for our young. Helen followed her achievements in the early childhood sector with a number of senior positions in unions until 2007 when she was elected to lead the union movement as president of the New Zealand Council of Trade Unions Te Kauai Kaimahi. She brought immense spirit and energy and integrity to the movement. As president of the Council of Trade Unions, Helen had no particular power to direct or instruct member unions on, on what they should do, but she didn't need formal authority to do so. She used her impressive powers of persuasion to unite and mobilise the union movement. She challenged many unions to modernise and union leaders to lead from the front. She embroiled herself in disputes when she saw that the weight of her office could make a difference. At the time, for example, of the global financial crisis and when this government was freshly in office, she led the unions in negotiating with the government and employers a nine-day working fortnight scheme to assist some businesses and many workers. And I still vividly recall one Thursday evening sitting in a restaurant on Simon Street at the time of all this, and we were talking about how we could make this nine-day fortnight work, and somebody came out with a brilliant idea, and she said, oh, I'll text John. It turns out that John was the Prime Minister. And we were very surprised to learn that. We were even more surprised when, after having texted the Prime Minister, she got a reply from the Prime Minister. It turned out that he was two doors down the road at a different restaurant. And we urged her to lead us down there so we can continue the discussions. And she said, no, even Tory Prime Ministers need a night off. <laughs> Mr Speaker, Helen Kelly led the way in many disputes involving meat workers, dairy workers and port workers. She led the fight for justice for the families of the victims of Pike River. But there are two fights that she took on that, in my view, stand out. The fight for better health and safety in the forestry industry. Her efforts have saved and will continue to save lives. She stood up to an industry that had changed radically, that had hundreds of little employers, some big, powerful, vested corporate interests who had let standards in that industry deteriorate. And we must never forget how that industry let worker health and safety get so bad. But perhaps the hardest fight Helen took on, at least until last year, was the Hobbit dispute. That was an ugly fight. Helen faced one of the most powerful industries, the might of Hollywood and its local associates. It was a dispute that would result in one of the most expedient, unnecessary and unprincipled laws in this country which still breaches our international obligations and remains an embarrassment amongst the community of developed nations. But even after all that, Mr Speaker, the tributes that flowed last Friday came from all quarters. Even amongst some of her fiercest opponents, she had won their respect. On Friday, we lost a great New Zealander. Faced with something more uncompromising, more relentless, and in the end, unstoppable, Helen was stopped. Mr Speaker, Helen Kelly did not see herself as a hero. She was a champion, an advocate, an agitator. She epitomised the best of New Zealand values. When she saw others in need, she offered to help. When she saw injustice, 
she strove to correct it. When she saw the opportunity to fight for progressive ideals, she climbed in, boots and all, uncompromisingly, relentlessly, and with one goal, to make positive change. She moved between her roles of union leader, colleague, friend, partner, mother, confidant, and agitator effortlessly. Helen stood in no one's shadow, and she will be missed. Speaker. Are they right? Oh, sorry. Uh... The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, uh, the Government uh, joins uh, with the uh, Leader of the Opposition in relation to the motion he's just presented uh, about Helen Kelly. Speaker, Helen Kelly didn't come from uh, my side of the political fence. Uh, there were on many occasions that I simply didn't agree with her, uh, not the least of being actually uh, her uh, disagreement with the government's view that the law should be changed in relation to the definition of a contractor uh, so movies like The Hobbits could be made in New Zealand. Mr Speaker, sometimes the forceful way that Helen Kelly made her arguments frustrated me. Uh, but she also had my enormous respect. She was passionate, uh, she was tenacious, uh, she was articulate, uh, she was intelligent uh, and she was pragmatic. Underneath all of that, she had a great sense of humour uh, and was uh, always prepared at least to sit down uh, and have a discussion uh, to see if uh, the, the rights and interests of New Zealanders could be advanced. Uh, as um, Mr Little has just pointed out, not the least of them being in relation to the Job Summit, uh, where I think the country had genuine concerns about uh, what might happen to workers in this country, and she fought uh, to see if there was a way to preserve their jobs uh, and their entitlements. Mr Speaker, Helen Kelly cared passionately uh, about those uh, that she fought for and she believed in them uh, to the end. Uh, she died far too young uh, and she had a great deal more to contribute. I think uh, most people know uh, that Helen Kelly was considering a career in politics if she hadn't been struck down by such a, a terrible illness. Uh, she would have enjoyed, I think, the opportunity to debate in this House uh, those values and principles that she held so dearly, and we would have enjoyed uh, debating uh, with her. But the truth is, Mr Speaker, uh, that Helen Kelly didn't need an office in the Beehive uh, to make a difference to New Zealand. Uh, she made that uh, all too uh, easily uh, through the capacity of her arguments and the way that she articulated them. To her family and friends, we pass our deepest condolences. May she rest in peace. Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker. Denise Roach. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to honour Helen Kelly and the Greens join with others across this House in mourning her loss and offering our condolences to her husband Steve and to her son Dylan, to her wider family and her colleagues and her many, many friends. I've worked with Helen a lot over the last five years as spokesperson for the industrial relations role for the Greens. Um, but I first met Helen socially. I think it was when she was the um, General Secretary of the um, Association of University Staff, now the TEU. She was in the early days of her relationship with her husband, 
and she used to visit our farm, our vineyard, quite regularly. Now, others have talked about her fierce intellect, and I can attest that she was still able to win an argument after a long night of wine tasting. We sometimes referred to Helen as the union movement's answer to the to Xena warrior princess. Because of her staunch advocacy, her willingness to enter the fray, and her ability to win a fight, and her cute dimples. And others, both here in the house and also through the media, through um, social media as well, have reflected on her compassion, her work with the families, the workers who've been killed at work, the forestry families, the Pike River families, the family in India of Charanpreet Daliwal, the young untrained security guard who was killed on his first day at work. There's no doubt that Helen's campaigns for justice for these families gave them some relief. I think if we were to look at a fitting memorial for Helen, I'd suggest it would be an overhaul of our industrial relations laws. <laughs> a health and safety law that actually protects farm workers, a reversal of the Hobbit law, a living wage for all ordinary New Zealanders, a law that enables New Zealanders to join a union without fear of ret retribution and the ability to organise for better working conditions, and for someone, for someone to be held responsible for the Pike River mine tragedy and for the bodies of those men in that mine to be returned to their families so that they could have some closure, they would be a fitting tribute to this remarkable woman. It's a damn shame that we won't see Helen in this house because goodness knows we need women of that calibre here. Her role as president of the New Zealand Council of Trade Unions, a public figure, and that comes at a cost to her family and we thank them for it, a public figure responsive to the needs of ordinary New Zealanders would have served her well here. She would have, she would have shone. She will be missed. Moi mai e wahine toa. Moi mai, moi mai ra. <clears throat> As we go marching, marching, we bring the greater days. The rising of the women means the and idler tend that toil while one reposes but is sharing of life's glories bread and roses bread and roses uh, Mr Speaker Are The Right Honourable Winston Peters uh, Those New Zealanders who've had the opportunity to witness the work and life of Helen Kelly over a great number of years would celebrate the fact that she was a standout New Zealander, a person of true character, of honesty and integrity. Clearly she put her cause and the people she served before herself and in doing so enhanced the respect for the union movement in this country and indeed it could be said to have in her interactions put unionism on a new level. Now anyone who has studied history knows that a good economy and a good society needs that sort of representation and indeed unionism and that sort of personality leading it. We were a better country for witnessing her professional life and a lesser country for her departure. Uh, our sincere condolences to her husband, her wider family and friends. Mr Speaker, on these occasions it's so common for speakers to rise and use the most effusive and laudatory language. But in Helen Kelly's particular case, what is said here today has a very special significance. Um, Madam Fox. A tēnā koe te mana whakawā e tū a ki au ki te tukua nā mihi ki tērā o ngā wahine toa. Tēnei wahine rangatira e hāpai nei ngā mahi uh, te tautoko i te kāhui kai mahi o te whenua. Kari au e te paku mōhi o iaia i mui taku taenga mai ki tēnei whare. Ingari ko ia tēnā e, e wero nei ia hau i rungi ia Twitter. Ko ia nō hoki tēnā i tukua tōna ringa ki au. Kia whai rautaki whakamua. 
Kia whina i tōku mārama tanga e pāna ki, ki taua tuāhuatanga mahi. Ko ia tēnā e, e hāpai nei i ngā take e tiaki pai nei ngā whānau ki rungi te whenua. Nā reira e tika ki a mihi atu ki aia, a, a nōna ki a tuku te aroha ki tōna whānau. Uh, ko ki te tuau i aia i te rātau, ko ki te te taumahatanga kei rungi i aia, me ona poko hiwi. I ngā tau ko a hipatu, ko a ki te matau i te māro o te tuara, te māro o te tangata, te kaho o tēnei wahine, te karawhiu nei ngā kupu tika, aha ko ko wai, aha ko keihia. I ngari te taumahatanga i rungi i aia, i te rātau, tēnei me te mate puku. A ko ia hoki, aha ko te taumahatanga, Aha ko te māwiwitanga, he take anō kai mui iaia, a ko te kai taru taru, hei rongo wā, a mō tērā mahi o te matepuku. Nā reira, mai, mai te wā, i ahu mai tēnei wahine toa, ki te wā e hoki anō tēnei wahine toa, ki te, te puku o te whenua, ki te kōpu o te whai o papatuanaku, i hāpai kaha nei i ngā take, aha ko keihia, aha ko kōwai, Tēnā e te wahine toa. Moi mai rā i rotu i ngā ringa māhana o te atua. Moi mai rā, kua tai te wā whakatā mai. Koi o tēne, te mōne hūtanga te whakapu ki te arataroa. Ki ngā pae pae maunga, hi koi a e te tini. David Seymour. I rise on behalf of the ACT Party to join with other leaders in tributing uh, somebody in Helen Kelly who was uh, fierce yet dignified, brilliant uh, yet humble, uh, and spent her life with a deep and compassionate devotion to the service of others. Uh, our regards and thoughts uh, with her family. May she rest in peace. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to.